Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. We're the Hatch Homes Group and it's our weekly market update. And today I'm gonna to pose the question to the team, is Portland housing prices overvalued? Is Portland housing prices overvalued? Yes, no. it depends. <laughs> so? There's some differing opinions and we're going to hear that in the media. We're going to hear that we're just walking on the street here and people talk about it mm -hmm. and we get that. But we wanted to look at some articles that have been coming out uh, just this last week. Uh, one of them was from Fortune magazine and it highlighted the top 40 um, cities in the nation that they think are overvalued right now. And fortunately, Portland did not make the top 40. Not. Great. There you dispersed. But let's see who is next to our neck of the woods. So this is actually a really cool map in the article that is interactive and it shows the um it, it shows some of the top cities that are. So if you look in Oregon, you get Albany, Oregon, of all yeah. places, at Albany. a 16. And then what's the one right above us? Is that in Washington, John? Yeah, yeah. these are color coded like there's 40, 40 areas. And uh, when you click over here, Albany is the 16th. Okay. So okay. Got it. It goes from a dark to light. So we know Boise is number one. A yeah. lot of cities in Idaho. So the yeah, Washington, the other one next to us was Longview, Washington. Where was it rated? Uh, 14. 14. Okay. So the big the biggies is Idaho, Boise, Idaho. I think Las yeah. Vegas was pretty high too, right? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. And oh, was it Colorado? Something in Colorado? One of them looks real bad. in Colorado. Yeah, there we go. Three. Two, Colorado Springs. Yeah. Colorado. Interesting. So those are the top three overvalued, but how are they determining what overvalued means? So what they did is take the medium income in the area and compare it to the home price index that Case Shiller puts out. And I think what this is kind of saying is not like we're suddenly going to see this like prices drop significantly. However, what it does mean is that, you know, prices are historically speaking a lot higher than the medium household income. And that's yeah. been pretty obvious throughout <laughs> Oregon, throughout, you know, our feelings <laughs> and getting the vibe of that. Um, so people that bought in uh, 2020, um, most people are, uh, Comfort, sitting comfortably where their homes have appreciated uh, way above what they, um, they purchased for, even with multiple offers and, and bidding over list price. But people, the end of 21, early 22, um, if they were involved in screaming uh, price wars, uh, multiple offers and uh, mm -hmm. over, uh, may have priced a lot over the list price then <clears throat> these people may be uh, susceptible although as you can see from the map Portland is a lot better off than um, the cities have seen a lot of migration and a lot of extreme price appreciation mm -hmm. it's a case by case basis um, but remember like even in a regular market you know, if you were to sell after two years, you're typically not going to make a lot of money back. Yeah. So the last few years of people like making such substantial like amount in short amount of ownership is, I think what we're saying is temporary and yeah. we're going to head to more of a normal, like hold on to your asset. If you want to have the best return off of it, don't, you know, buy it with a you know, that you spent 50, 100,000 over list price and then inspect to sell it in a few years and make a ton of money. Uh, that's not the market we're in right now. Yeah, yeah. Two things I wanted to finish with. Um, I, I can just see as one or two of these markets appreciate, uh, see declines in appreciation to, to an extent where there's price drops and there could be five, five or 10% price drops. Then it's going to be all over the media. 
Mm -hmm. we're, sure. seeing, we're seeing price decreases, but you always see price decreases in a normal market. It's just that they seem more extreme right now because we haven't seen price decreases very much. Yes. And like when we focus on just in Portland in general, um, you know, even though we didn't make the top 40, what we're what we all saw throughout this very, very competitive market, we all had buyers that lost out on houses and bidding wars where we all felt like, well, the buyer that won way overvalued the property, like overvalued it um, to the point where they're going to have to hold on to that house for a lot of years to see that, you know, come back to them. Yeah. And so for the most part in Portland, I think we're going to see more like case by case, like there's going to be some houses that are like, that's a little overvalued right there. And then, you know, we're not going to see that as much on other houses. I think the bottom line is that, you know, a lot of people think and they feel that Portland is overvalued. And what we're seeing in a lot of the data is that it's just not supporting that. Um, so comparatively speaking, we're sitting really in a good spot, especially yep. compared to other West Coast cities, as far as affordability goes. Yep. I am surprised that California didn't turn up on this list, yeah. though, I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am too. There was kind of a mass ex exodus, though. Maybe because the incomes are just higher yeah. uh, in general. That must be why. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. But hey, if you want to get the full list of these 40 places, then um, message us today and we'll get it over to you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. Have a great week. Have a great week. Yeah. Thanks. Like and subscribe. <laughs> you guys, we can't forget to ask that. <laughs>